Hi guys, welcome. Today we're going to do a COVID-19 home test and I'm going to talk you through step by step how to do it. So let's get started. Very first step is to find a place where you can do the test and make sure the area is clean. So I'm going to do it here on my desk and I'm going to use an antiseptic wipe to clean the area. Okay, now that's nice and clean, we go and wash our hands. Okie doke, so now we basically fill out a checklist to make sure all of the equipment that has come in this box, I'm gonna show you what this box is like, so that's what you receive in the post. Uh, we make sure everything is in there because you don't wanna get started and find out halfway through that things are missing. We now have to clear all of the mucus from the back of our throat, from our nasal passages, and the best way to do that is the old fashioned way. So we give it a good blow and dispose in a bin, and then you've guessed it, after this, you wash your hands again. So running theme here is wash your hands a lot as if you haven't heard of that already. Okay, so we now are onto our kit, bit of kit. So if you have a look at it, open it out and I'll show you now what we've got here within this. So you've got the step-by-step -step guide which tells you how to register online for the swab. Uh, you've got the biohazard bag, you've got where the swab goes into and you've got a little zip bag, plastic bag on the left there that the swab goes into first. You've got an absorbent um, pad here, the seal on the box, that's your swab and that's the beautiful box it goes into. There are two areas that we need to swap. The first one is the back of the throat where the tonsils are. So on either side, you've got your tonsils and I'll show an image here to my side somewhere. And the second one is up one nostril and you need to go about two and a half centimeters or about an inch or so into the nostril to do it. With the swab, once you get to the back of the throat tonsil area, you want to be just slowly rotating it so it's picking up all of the, the gunk that might be on there. Same with the nostril, once you go in for about two and a half centimeters an inch, what you want to do is slowly rotate it and you do that for 10 seconds. It's always good to go for the back of the throat first and then the nostril. Probably don't need to explain why that's a better option. Okay, so we're gonna move on to doing the swab. For this part, you will need a mirror so that you can have a look at the back of your throat to make sure you are swabbing the tonsils. I'll show you where the tonsils are just there. All right, so let's get started. So you don't want to grab the cotton part of the swab, you want the cotton part to be, you, I'm sure you'll get it. If we have a look at the swab, you don't want the top to touch anything else bar the tonsil part for 10 seconds and then your nostril for 10 seconds. So you don't want it to touch your cheeks, your tongue or anything else. A few minutes later. <clears throat> okay, so that wasn't the most pleasant thing I've ever experienced, but now that's uh, the throat and the nostril swap done, we then pop it in to the container. So this is the container. If you can see, the swab has a little break-off point. You want that to be inside the container. So like so, and then you just bend it like so, and it should break off like that. What you don't want to do is break it off at another point where there's too much of the stick in there or not enough. That is the ideal break-off point. As you can see, there is some liquid in the container and you don't want to spill that anywhere. So try and keep that in. We are now done with the swab. Okay, so that's the swab done. Before we move on to another part, let's wash our hands and get everything clean. Now that we are back, we're gonna try and put it safely into the right bags. The very first bag you use is the clear Ziploc bag. So that is tight, pop it in there, and you pop the little absorbent pad in there as well. Okay, so once that's done, you're looking at the biohazard bag. There we go, and then you just take off the foil and it seals. So that's the bag sealed. We're gonna pop it there and we are going to just clean the outside of the bag because 
although the people who will be taking the swabs will wear gloves and all the protective equipment, it's just best to make sure there's nothing that we've put on there. So give it a nice wipe and clean. Now here is the toughest part of all of this from what I can see. You'll have something that looks like this. We need to make a box out of this so that we could put our swab in there and send it off via post. Uh, the way through lots of trial and error is that the white is on the outside. So white is on the outside and now you can just enjoy me try and work out how this works. It's a lot tougher than it looks. I think we're making some progress. If once you've folded all the sides, the side's sticking out. It's not right. Tuck, tuck all those bits in, like so. And essentially, if you fold all of those bits around, you will get a nice little box. Now, just the top part left. So we're just doing that. And then we're just going through the edges. There we go. So you should, by the end of it, have a lovely, delightful looking box, like so. What you want to do is get your sample, put it on there, and remember, you've got your seal as well. So now you're going to close the box. So that's once the box is completely closed. Pop the label on there and it is sealed and you are done. You then need to post it. Make sure you have a look at the local collection times. You don't want to do it after a collection time. You want to do it at least an hour or two before the collection time so that it can just be sent off immediately. Last but not least, here's the seal. That's the box done. Now to answer a couple of questions, it can be a little bit tricky with children because they're not gonna like something being stuck into their nose or the back of their throat. So it's important you try and play some games, distractions. Uh, it shouldn't be obviously painful, but if it if it is for them, then you obviously stop. But often it's a, it's a good idea to explain to them why you're doing it, that it may not seem pleasant but they mustn't move around because otherwise the swab goes all over the mouth and that's not what you want so important to play games um distraction put on some youtube put on a game on the phone or something and then you want to be doing it and the timings are pretty much the same 10 seconds for the back of the throat the tonsil area and then 10 to 15 seconds for the nostril cool hope that's been useful as i said the hardest part is the actual box itself so if you manage to do the swab and the box, you're winning. Remember to follow up the results. It's better to see it visually than in a manual. Uh, that's certainly how I learned. So if you found it useful, then please consider giving us a follow. I make health videos on here that makes you healthier, happier, and more informed. Catch you on the next one.